Hello. Let's do some more complicated games with uncertainty. Why don't you pause the video and figure out what's going to happen in this game. Okay. In these games, it's usually best to start looking for dominant strategies. Let's see if Sam has one. Sam can't observe if he's on the left or the right. If he were on the left, he would say, I would rather pick X than Y because 3 is greater than 2. If Sam knew he was on the right, he'd say, well, I'd rather have Y over X because 15 is greater than 1. So Sam doesn't have a dominant strategy because he doesn't know what he wants to do until he figures out what Bill has done. Bill will know that Sam can't condition his move based on what Bill did. So if Sam's going to pick X, he'll pick X regardless of whether Bill picks A or B. And Sam's going to pick Y, Sam will pick Y, regardless of whether Bill picks A or B. So if Sam's going to go on to pick X, Bill would rather pick A because 9 is greater than 7. And if Sam is going to go on to pick Y, Bill would rather pick B because 5 is greater than 0. So Bill doesn't know what he wants to do until he can figure out what Sam's going to do. Unfortunately, there's no way of figuring out what's going to happen in this game. Multiple things could happen. And if you draw this game, make it its equivalent in terms of a simultaneous move game, you'll see that there are multiple equilibria. I now want to make one change. I want to introduce a strategy C. The only thing different from this game and the previous game is this C. Now, if C happens, the game ends, Bill gets 8, and Sam gets 3. Let's see how the existence of C changes the outcome. What C does is render B stupid. Remember, what I call stupid, other game theorists call dominated. If Bill plays C, he's guaranteed an 8. If he plays B, he gets 7 or 1, depending on what Sam does. Well, 8 is obviously better than getting, sorry, he gets 7 or 5 if he plays B. 8 is obviously better than 7 or 5. So there's no way that Bill is ever going to play B given the existence of C. This doesn't mean that Bill's going to play C, but it does mean that he should never play B. Sam should realize this about Bill. Sam should realize, okay, if I'm told it's my move, I know C hasn't been played. But if I'm told it's my move, I can infer that B hasn't been played. So when Sam gets to move, even though Sam can't see if he's here or here, he should be able to infer that he's here. And if Sam infers he's here, if he gets to move, he should pick X because 3 is greater than 2. So if Sam gets to move, Sam should pick X. Bill should figure this out. Bill should say, if I pick A, I get 9. If I pick B, which is stupid, but still, I would get 7. And if I pick C, I get 8. Well, 9 being the biggest of those three possibilities, you know, that, that's what I'll pick. I'll pick A, and this is where the parties end up. Now, this is actually really weird, weirder than you think. Let's consider C. C is never played. The parties, they figure out the game, know that C will never be played. And Sam, when he gets to move, is 100% certain that C couldn't have been played, even if Bill's crazy, because Sam gets to move by the rules of the game, C hasn't been played. And yet C totally changed the outcome of the game. Something that could have happened, but didn't, and the parties knew wouldn't happen, and when Sam got to move, knew for certain didn't happen, completely changed what happened in the game. So things that could happen, but you know won't happen, can change what does happen. That's one of the reasons why game theory is really neat and, and, and quite deep. All right, let's go on to a more complicated game. Now, in this game, if Bill picks A or B, Tom is told he's somewhere here. If Bill picks F or G, Tom is told he's somewhere here. And if Bill picks H, well, the game's over, Bill gets eight, Tom gets one, Tom never moves. So Tom, if he gets to move, knows a little bit, but doesn't know everything. What's going to happen in this game? Why don't you pause the video and figure it out? Okay. Here's what I think is going to happen. First thing to do to solve this is to note that F is stupid. 
If Bill picks 8, Bill picks H. He's guaranteed 8. If he picks F, he gets 3 or 6, both of which are, of course, worse than 8. F is stupid. Bill should never play F. Tom should realize that F will never be played because of the possibility of H. But F is the only strategy made stupid by H, right? If you pick, if Bill picks A, it's a possibility he could get more than 8, depending on Tom. If he picks B, there's a possibility he could get more than 8, dependent upon Tom. And if he picks G, there's a possibility he could get more than 8. So H renders F and only F stupid. Tom, if he gets to move and is told that F or G has been played, Tom is told he's here, he should infer, he said, well, I, I bet I'm over here because Bill is rational and rational people don't do stupid things. So Tom gets to move and he, because F or G has been played, he'll say, well, my choice is to get a five or a zero. I'm going for the five, I'll pick X. So Bill will respond by being told he's here by picking X. Sorry, Tom will respond by being told he's here by picking X. Bill should realize that. Bill will say, if I pick F or G, X is going to be played. So Bill will say, if I pick G, I know X will be played and I can get 11. So that will cause Bill to say, well, I'm definitely not going for H because I can get 11 playing G. What about over here? Well, if Bill knows he can get 11 playing G, there is just no way he's going to play A because A doesn't give any possibility of getting 11 or more. But B might. So now if Bill plays B, he might get more, he might get more than 11 if Tom would pick M. Tom, furthermore, if Tom gets to move and is told he's in this information set, Tom should realize, well, the only reason that Bill would pick A or B is to have a chance at getting more than this 11, and that means Bill has picked B. And if Bill picks B, I want to pick M because 7 is greater than 0. So Bill, Tom should realize that Bill won't pick A because A will end up giving a worse payoff than G. And so Tom would respond to A or B with M. Bill will say, well, gee, if A leads to M, I get 0 if I pick A. B leads to M, I get 12 if I pick B. F leads to X, which gives me 3. G leads to X, which gives me 11. And H just leads to 8. Bill will say, my best choice is B. And the parties will end up here. That's what I think will happen in this game. OK. Let's do another game, and why don't you pause the video to figure out what will happen in this game. Okay. Uh, in this game, I think we can start out by eliminating some stupid strategies. So why is a stupid strategy for Nick? Let's imagine why. If Nick, let's say Nick is told he's in this information set. He says, well, look, I can't observe whether I'm here or here. If I'm here, I'm better off with X than Y. If I'm here, I'm better off with X than Y. So Nick will say, even though I don't know whether, if I'm told I'm in this oval, I don't know whether I'm here or here, I should prefer X to Y. So Y is a stupid strategy for me to pick. Okay. So that means that um, Nick will pick X if he told, he's told he's in this information set. Now, what about what will happen over here? Well, Nick can't condition his move on what Alex does. If Alex picks A or B, that can't affect whether Nick picks L or M because, again, they don't transmit. Alex doesn't transmit information that would cause Nick to do something different if he picks A or B. But Alex should say, if Nick was going to, if I were to pick A or B, and I knew that it would cause Nick to go on to pick L, I would prefer B because three is greater than one. And if I knew my picking A or B would cause Nick to go on to pick M, I would prefer um, B because seven is greater than six. So regardless of whether Nick is going to pick L or M, Alex will say, I would prefer B to A. So A becomes a stupid strategy for Alex. Nick will realize this, and Nick will say, you know, if I'm told I get to move, I bet A wasn't played. I bet instead B was played. If you ignore this game, B would be a dominant strategy. 
So I know that B was played, and if I know that B is played, I'm going to prefer L to M. So Nick, if he gets here, should play L. Nick, if he is over here, for reasons we said since Y is stupid, should pick X. So this causes Alex to say A would lead to 1, B would lead to 3, F would lead to 4, and G would lead to 2. The best Alex can do is get this 4, so this game has the outcome of the parties going F to X. Thank you. Goodbye.